Hello, 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 guys. How are you doing today? Welcome to the Kange Household of Faith. Another day in the glory. You hello, are Pastor welcome. Pauline. Hi, Pastor Peter. How are you? I am doing wonderful. In fact, I would say it like Pastor Jane. I am doing wonderfully well. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. God is good. So we are excited about today. A wonderful day in the presence of the Lord. You had a good day, Pastor Pauline? Yes, it was a good day. It's a good day. Nice and quiet. Nice and quiet. We like screaming, it's a good day. <laughs> your household. So You're I hope welcome, you had everybody. a good day too. Welcome, 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 guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank welcome. you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hello, Tanine. Hi, Pastor Eunice. Donnie, Donnie. Hi, Senegal Rising. Hello. Hey, Sister Lisa. Hi, Pastor Ruth. God bless you. Apostle Nokosin. Yay. Hello, man of God. How are you? Hope you're doing all you're doing wonderful. Hi, Pastor Evelyn. Hello, Pastor Evelyn. How are you? Hello, Mom. How are you? Welcome, Mom. Praise the Lord. Listen, guys, um, on our last broadcast, we're talking about the mindset if you would, the mindset of a victorious person. Mm -hmm. We're talking about that, you know, looking at how a victorious person thinks. Yes. How they get to come into a place of victory. Mm -hmm. and, and Pastor Pauline, I, I have realized through the years that a downcast person hardly will ever experience victory. Mm. Because Victory accesses your being before you access victory. And, oh, wait, and, wait, wait, and we are wait, going to wait. have that conversation today. Okay, he started already. Okay. <laughs> we are going to have that conversation today. Yeah. You have to say that again. This is important for everyone to understand. Victory accesses your, your being, being before, before you access victory. And, and the reason why it's like that is because faith Okay, so let's 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 break it down, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? Right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when faith comes to you, it lights you up to see possibilities. Yes. So if possibilities don't come to you, you will not access possibilities. True. So victory comes into your being before you access, access victory. victory. So we are going to talk about that today. And when we talk about your being, we are talking about your innermost being. Hence, the conversation about your, your soulish realm. So we are going to talk about that today. And God is going to help us. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God is going to help us. This is one day that God does come and help. So again, welcome to the Kanga household of faith where we bring to you the, the word, word of restoration, restoration in the spirit of faith. You, you know, Pastor Pauline was making a statement earlier on today. She said, well, guess what? Because Jesus is still alive, it doesn't matter who is the president. So That's right. He, so, didn't, he didn't fall off his throne. And, so. and, and, and I said, amen to that. Well, we're going good. to stick to it. So we're going to be in the word of God, That's right. irrespective of what ballots are closing out? And, and <laughs> That's no, right. we are going to go head on. All right, in, in the, the word. word. <laughs> yes, we are going to do that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise amen, the amen. Lord. Welcome, Ganado, in the house. Welcome, yes, Canada. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Bless you, bless you. Hello, Pascal, Sister Barbara, and Minister Yvonne. Yeah. Hi, Minister Judy. Welcome. Thank you, Minister Lisa. So we can say, we sing and shout it, God is good. We celebrate. We celebrate, God is good. All right, keyboards don't change, don't change, stay right there. <laughs> stay right there. But God is wonderful, Pastor Pauline. God yes, is yes. marvelous. God, God is good. God is good. God is good. He's God is good. God. And so today is no exception. Hello, Conrad. Good to have you on. Where have you been, Conrad? 
Uh oh, Conrad. Mm -mm. Okay, hello, Mr. Chun. God bless you. Good to have you on. We really have to have this conversation, seriously Thank you. speaking. Thank you, Rising. Because, yes, we do. Because, Pastor Pauline, you find in the Word of God people who thought of themselves defeated already go back home. Oh, my goodness. So, so that takes us right into the book of Judges. <laughs> right, right into the book of Judges. And so there are many things we are going to be talking about tonight. And I pray that the Lord helps us de deliver His mind. Yes. For us tonight. Amen. So without you, any Jesus. further delay, you, we Jesus. are going to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. We honor you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Faithful and true Jehovah. Thank you, Lord. No God, nowhere like you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord, may you come and feed your land this day in the name of Jesus. May you feed us, Lord God, with your word. Arise, arise, O God. Arise, O God. Arise, arise, O God. Arise, arise, O God. Arise, arise, O God. And speak words of comfort to Zion, O God. Le kora bra shanta le brehe gida lo sonto poponi. We ask, O God, that you would be here. That you would be here. That you would be here with us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There's someone who's on the line right now whose relative just underwent surgery. He just had surgery. I can still see the cut. We speak speedy recovery in the name of Jesus. Amen. We put an end to every complication in the name of Amen. Jesus. Healing for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We pray for everyone who is listening right now. That even as they take down notes, they will take note, O oh God, of that which you are saying in the name of Jesus. That there will be transformations as your word goes forth in the name of Jesus. Someone is saying there's someone who had surgery today. Yeah, okay. In the name of Jesus, we speak recovery. Recovery, recovery. In the name of Jesus. I am seeing a lady. I'm seeing a lady, your dark skin. 
dark in complexion and and I'm seeing that even even today so I'm seeing your home and I'm seeing the back of your house and I'm seeing a pole so these are like two poles and there are ropes running from one pole to the other and I see that when you do laundry you 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 bring your clothes and dry them out on these lines I see bed sheets lined up and there's something that happened to your child one of your children one of your children had a situation one of your children had a situation and God is intervening on their behalf right now as we speak God is intervening on their behalf right now as we speak in the name of Jesus have your way Lord God have your way father have your way father we come against untimely death in the name of Jesus we rebuke the spirit of death away from this family in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord for your faithfulness thank you for your faithfulness in the name of Jesus there's someone I see your home I see the entrance to your home right now as we speak I see the entrance to your home and I see that you're concerned about an eviction you're concerned that you're going to lose your stuff you're concerned that you're going to lose your stuff you're concerned that you're going to lose your stuff God said I should tell you that you will not lose you will not lose he is the one who is preserving you you will not lose you will not lose you will not lose believe the Lord this day for restoration believe the Lord that things will begin to come together in the name of Jesus so even now, Ramo Shanda Rabako se telebra. We pray for a coming together, a coming together, a coming together. Let there be a resolution in the name of Jesus. We speak the wisdom of God to just spring forth in the name of Jesus. Let there be a settlement. Let there be a settlement in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I don't know who this is. You are just so burdened by guilt. I'm not sure what transpired or what happened, but there's just this weight. I can feel the weight on you, weight of guilt. And I need for you to understand that based on the word of God, that guilt is not of God. The word of God declares that the love of God pulls us, it draws us into a place of repentance godly sorrow walketh repentance when you have that level of guilt and it keeps you depressed it is not of god whatever it may be you need to make it right with god and after you have asked god for forgiveness it's done first john chapter 1 verse 9 says that god is faithful to forgive if we ask for forgiveness and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness his word declares that as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he's removed your iniquities away from you and your sins he remembers no more. You cannot afford to live under that weight of guilt. It is not of God. So may that thing be broken off of you even now in the name of Jesus. The word of God declares you're forgiven and so it is in the name of Jesus. You cast your burdens onto him you bring yourself to him if you are you're weary and heavy laden and he declares that he will give you rest it is not the desire of god for you to walk around carrying weights you need to be able to break free from the weights and the sin that easily besets you so you can run this race with ease you have to be light to take flight so get rid of that weight in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, guilt, condemnation is not of God. 
you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are a born again child of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That means you have the ability and the freedom and the, the access by the blood of Jesus to stand before God or to come before his throne without a sense of intimidation or condemnation. So embrace the forgiveness of God that is available to you by the reason of the shed blood of Jesus on the cross and move away from this guilt. I break it off of you even now in the name of Jesus. You know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So even as I am declaring the word of God over you, you can begin to sense how it's the, the, the weight is moving away from you. It's falling off of your shoulder in the name of Jesus, not your portion. And it's not of God. The spirit of God brings conviction so you can repent and move forward. The enemy is the one that is the accuser of the brethren, like the Bible says in Revelation 12, 10. And he comes when he accuses, it comes with that sense of guilt and weight. Gives you the impression that God is so disappointed in you, he doesn't even want to deal with you anymore. But that is not the God we serve. Jesus' parable about our relationship with the Father in Luke 15, talking about the prodigal son, gives us a picture into the mind of the father. He was standing with his arms wide open, waiting for the son to return. So, make it right with him and move forward in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, it's always exciting when the Lord is, you know, begins to speak to us the way he's doing right now and speak concerning you. Hello, Noella. God bless you. You're all welcome again. Um, thank you for joining us for the Kanga household of faith. Hallelujah, for we are serving a faithful God. Yes, he And so uh, tonight we are about to have a glorious time in his presence. Hallelujah. Right, Pastor Pauline? So... We were having conversation about mm, the fact that you shouldn't be thinking any kind of thing because when you just think about all kinds of things, entertain what is not right, it affects your victorious life yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. And you started by saying victory has to access you yes. before you can access victory. And, and I think and, that was and, nice. And, and that's something major for us. So yes. we are going to go to Third John right now. Did I say third John? Mm -hmm. You did. <laughs> I know why I said third John. So welcome, we Minister are going to go to Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, Pastor John. Hi, Lori. Welcome. Okay. So, so here we go. First John or third John? We, we will be going to, 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 to third John, but we need to stop by first John. Okay. That's, that's how it happens. <laughs> We need to stop by First John. So First John chapter five. Yes, sir. Yo, let's get this happening. <laughs> First John chapter five. A word is about to define me. I am about to know more about myself right now. Amen. Right. I'm yes. about to know more about myself. The Bible says in First John chapter five, verse four, it says, "For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world." So, hey guys, free prophetic word. No money, no, yeah, there's nothing you need to do to get his prophetic word. Listen, this is news for you. You're overcoming today. It's a prophetic word that is not free. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I don't want to get into that right now, but I want you to realize this, right? This is free of charge. You are an overcomer. That's what the Bible says. Amen. So this is wonderful, right? <laughs> Hello, Pastor Evelyn. Don't you agree? That's right. So the thing is this. If you are born of God, we need to hear out this. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is a proclamation from the throne of grace. Amen. Fresh baked bread right off the oven just now. <laughs> Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. We can go to sleep with that. Period. Period. <laughs> it's right here. For whatsoever is born of God 
overcome the world. It is not a question. No, it's not. It is not a suggestion. It is not a missed statement. Settled. It is settled. <laughs> Whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. Child of God, listen, 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 listen. Don't let anyone tell you you are going to fail. And that anyone includes you. That's right. Especially, Especially you. you. In fact, yeah. you. Especially you. Especially you. Because when we understand that by definition, and by definition I'm not talking about, you know, when they say the definition of a word. I'm talking about by design. So by definition, and this one is high definition. Genetic makeup. <laughs> by genetic makeup, that's right. <laughs> Kingdom genetic. We have been designed for victory. Amen. That's right. We have been designed to overcome. <laughs> we have been designed to cross the line. All right, Dr. Noella. <laughs> what, is, what did Noella say? Freshly baked bread, ready to roll down and destroy my enemies. <laughs> That's Come right. On, Judges, Judges chapter 7. <laughs> exactly. That is what the word of God is saying to us right now. The Bible says there was bread in the temple. And that bread cannot be stale bread. No. This is fresh bread from fresh. the throne of God. You are an overcomer. <laughs> and just like Noella said, it's time to roll down and crush your enemies <laughs> with right. that word. Amen. For whatsoever is born of God, overcome the, the world. And this is the victory that overcome yes. the world. Even our faith. Even and Pastor Pauline, right here, there's something we have to say. Yes, sir. And we really have to say this because by design, we are overcomers. Period. But. Ouch. And that's why we want to talk about that. Okay. In, in, in the book of Leviticus. So guys, I need to tell you this. In the book of Leviticus, the Bible talks about, there's an entire conversation about Jubilee. And we know that Jubilee is the celebration of the 50th year. Mm -hmm. But now something happened prior to the 50th year. With crops, with everything else. When, if someone was a slave, 50th year, freedom has come. Yes. If they were in jail, 50th year, they're coming out. Yes. So all debts canceled. Um, 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 all levy of punishment it's, it's taken out of the way those things happened in the year called the jubilee year that's the reason why when Jesus came he was talking about the acceptable day of the Lord because the 50th year is also the acceptable year, acceptable year. of the Lord like the word of God says you know a thousand day is a thousand um, um, one day is like a thousand um, years, years before the Lord. And, and so we find that coming together with the Jubilee. Now what we must understand is when Jubilee came, there had to be a proclamation of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why when Jesus came and, and, and in Luke chapter 4, he went down into the temple. When he went there, he proclaimed the word of the Lord and said, today is this word fulfilled. He didn't say it's fulfilled in your life. He said, it's fulfilled in your hearing. Yeah. This, this guys, um, okay, so if you're <laughs> taking down notes, you can take that down in Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, where he says that. So he reads it, and he says, guess what? Because this word has touched your ears. Can I read it? That's okay, man. Okay. Luke chapter 4, verse, I'm going to start from verse 18. Yes, ma'am. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The because, Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Come on to that. He, Jesus was so <laughs> certain. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach it. Yes. So to proclaim, Jesus said, he's been called to herald this yes. good news. Yes. To proclaim this good news. To announce this good news. So let's get it. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Okay, to announce to the captives that they are free. That they are free. To announce to those who are captured that they are free. To announce to those who are imprisoned that they are free. Amen. So Jesus' um, 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 
um, Herald message was really about you ought not to be locked up in this situation. It's time for you to get out. So if you're plagued by cancer, cancer has created a jail cell and put you in it. If you're plagued by sin, you're plagued by disease, you're plagued by curses, you're, whatever you're plagued with, it is a jail cell. It is, it is a, um, 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 a wall of containment. Yes. And so That's even tonight, we are refusing oh, the Rabbi walls of Shaka. containment. Amen. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So child of God, refuse the world, the walls of containment yes. tonight. Amen. I shall not be contained. I shall, I shall have a job. I in shall not be contained um, 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 in poverty. I shall be wealthy. I shall not be contained in curses. I shall be empowered to prosper, to be empowered to succeed, be empowered to, to move forward. Yes. That is what God is saying to us. So we are rejecting all forms of seclusion. Amen. We are free to engage with everything. Amen. Though lawfully. Yes. So we don't put... Uh, mm, mm, mm. You don't put the lawful first the lawful comes last yes this is important for you for you to understand child of god oh, without yes. which you, the enemy will sell to you the idea that you are where you are because so he's putting the law first and then you are following but you are supposed to follow. You are supposed to come to first. Be in the forefront. Then the law can come after you. And, and, and I'm going to explain what I mean. Mm -hmm. It is in Christ that we live and move and have our being. Yes. It is in him that we have forgiveness. Yes. It is in him. So we access him who is the fulfillment of everything. Then we begin to exercise what we have access. Yes. So by design, by design, child of God, by design, listen, except you're not a child of God. If you're not a child of God, and all if you kinds are not, of you things can become you can right become now. right about now. That's right. You know, by just saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Yes. I surrender to you. Right? So that's what the word of God is saying. Yes. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, no. but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you have to say. Yes. And that's where that's Back where we are. Heralding. Back to heralding. And so in, 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 in the book of Exodus, there was a message that was proclaimed. Everyone in the, in the day of Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, had to speak forth their own liberation. Yes. So you are not free until you say, I am free. Come on now. You are not healed until you say, I am healed. Let you it, are not delivered until. So, yes, that's right, Pastor Pauline. So let the weak say, I am strong. Mm -hmm. Let the heal, let the, the sick say, I am, I am healed. healed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah. So in proclaiming what has been accomplished, the, 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 the act of the Lord is sealed in your life. Amen. You know, it's interesting because Jesus is speaking here. Yes, ma'am. And he has not yet gone to the cross. No. We are made to understand that the New Testament church mm -hmm. or the new covenant, of course, covenant is enacted by the shedding of blood. Yeah. So the new covenant takes effect after Jesus died and resurrected. Mm -hmm. But here he is proclaiming before he could go to the cross and he's declaring that the scripture is fulfilled this day in their hearing. Oh my God. Yes, ma'am. So he already began to herald what is before, even before the manifestation. Mm -hmm. And as many as heard him and believed what he declared, they stepped into the manifestation of what he declared. Yes. Okay. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set a liberty them that are bruised to set at liberty them that are bruised so let's have a conversation yes sir english english <laughs> what does it mean to be bruised english conversation where's camilla come and get your father if you say someone is bruised 
then you're saying they have um, um, their body is broken mm -hmm. to be bruised mm -hmm. so to be bruised is very different from having a deep wound yes so bruises are superficial they are on the top but they produce a lot of pain because that's where your nerves are found mm -hmm. right there on the top so you can feel appropriate mm -hmm. but Pastor Pauline it doesn't make sense to say read it again to set at liberty them that are bruised yeah how Jesus is revealing to us right here that someone who's bruised doesn't know or realize that they are a captive. You had a relationship and you were bruised. You were broken hearted. So even if the pain goes deep inside, Jesus has a response for it. And the child of God has to see that everything done to them is to keep them captured. If you have a bruise, you have to make up your mind to forget it. Okay. If you don't make up your mind to forget it, you, you will keep going back to it. Because the pain keeps reminding you so you are you are a victim to that circumstance yes. but jesus says i am coming to liberate you from that imprisonment because to be victimized means to be captured by an occurrence this is some deep stuff, Pastor Peter, because most of the time people don't realize that being a victim is a, cap is a captured state. Right. That's the reason why everyone who's ever been heartbroken, bruised by someone, relationship, whatever, all of these people find it absolutely very challenging to forgive. Because to forgive means to let go. Yeah. But how can they let go when they are in jail? They have to be let out. I don't know if I'm talking to someone today. My God. That's the when someone is in jail, they have to be let out. Yes. So when you tell them to forgive, it is challenging because that means let go. And it but really doesn't make sense. It doesn't them. make yeah. sense because it's a reversal of roles. Because if I'm in jail, I'm expecting you to come let me out. Yes. And you are standing out there telling me you let go. Like, what are you talking about? It can't work because you are still in jail. Right. The jails keep telling you you are still here. But, Pastor Pauline, this is where it gets interesting. So unbelievers will hardly be able to forgive. But when you are a child of God, and you begin to hear Jesus oh, saying, Amanda. as he said, you know, what, what we, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. He said, forgive so your heavenly Father can forgive. forgive you. So the word to forgive in that case is handed over to him. And then, he will pull you out because that thing is keeping you bound. Yeah. Cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you. So Jesus is not saying from an insensitive standpoint, hand it over to me. Right. <laughs> hand it over to Get me. Get over it. Hand it over to me. <laughs> Why is he saying hand it over to me? Because when you do, he will obtain the key yes. for your liberation. Give it to me. It's not worth it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Hand it over to me. So child of God, if you're with someone around you tonight, 
Turn to them and tell them, hand it over to the Lord. Hand it over to the Lord. Hand it over to the Lord. You have to hand it over to the Lord because when you... Pastor Fumi, can we break some things down? We have to. You have to. When you go to the shop and you realize that prices have been augmented, it's disturbing. (laughs) Right. Why is it disturbing? Because that is a thing that matters to you. And because it matters, you would be captured by the information. But now, let's flip the coin. What happens to someone who keeps on listening to faith? The things that God has done, the things that God will do, Mm. they hear possibilities. Come on. But when you went to the store and the prices went up, you heard impossibilities. Yeah. So when the word of God says, take heed what you hear and take heed how you hear, hear. the word of God is saying to you, Jesus is saying to us, listen, my children, listen, my people, listen, those who are co-heirs with me, listen. I decide what to listen to because if you don't listen right, then you will not receive right. You re, you, if you listen wrongly, you believe wrongly. You believe wrongly. And anyone who believes wrongly cannot receive. They cannot receive right. They cannot receive right. Oh, Father in heaven, help us. Help us. So as you're listening tonight, the, the word of God is being fulfilled in your hearing. Yes. That's the scripture we were reading. That's it. And, and so it, whatever you're hearing, the moment it touches your ears, fulfillment has come. Amen. So there is no such thing like it will happen in two weeks. It is happening right, right now. now. As you're hearing this, it is Amen. happening to you Amen. right now. Listen, guys, oh, it is rabbi. okay to take tabs of your financial spending. Oh, you know, take, take, take tabs. This mm-hmm. is what I'm spending. This is what I'm doing. That's okay, right? Until... That information becomes derogatory. Yes. Until that information becomes a poison. Moves you into depression. Pastor Peter, it, it reminds me of inc- incidents in which we've seen people go through their birthday and they say, I'm taking stock of my life. Uh-huh. And by the time they're done taking stock, they're depressed. Mm. They are depressed because they are taking stock of the negative news exactly they are not taking stock of the positive news shall i take you to proverbs go and see how the guy says oh wow look at the rings around my neck take stock of that look at my eyes take stock of that yeah so it's a wrong perspective so 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 you're taking stock of the wrong thing you should take stock of the right thing. That's right. I don't know how many of you do it. You know, you're like, oh, I just turned 40. I need to take stock of my life. You know, I need to know how far I've come. And by the end of the day, you're looking like, I don't know. There's nothing to show for So, me. So the right that, way of taking stock right. is when you are celebrating your 40th birthday mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, um, other people's celebration got them into crisis because of, of the Bible they were reading. Right? Right. When you are celebrating your 40th birthday or your 50th birthday or your, or your 100th oh, yeah. birthday, exactly. take the Bible and look at it. Look what the Lord has done. Come on! Mm. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Right. It is in the Word. <laughs> this is where we know what has happened to us. Amen. This is it. Yes. This is it. What has happened to you? You want to know what happened to me? Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. That's See right. what happened to me. You want to know what happened to me? Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Look at what happened to me. You want to know what happened to me? Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. <laughs> Talk about measuring Verse your four. life with the word. Yeah, you measure yeah. your life with the word. Yeah. Because the word is what has happened to you. Oh, hallelujah. Not what will, but what has. What has. This 
is what has Ooh, happened. Oh, that is so good. Did you hear that? Yeah. The word of God is what has happened to you. Yes. Not what will happen, what has already oh, happened. Oh, yes. What has happened to me. Okay, so Pastor Pauline, let's check out a few oh, things so that good. have happened to me. Only to me. To me too. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll consider that. I am my father's daughter. Can we consider that for later? <laughs> Can we consider that for later? Woo! For right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Okay. Okay. So, so look at this. Look at this, right? Mm -hmm. The word of God says, oh, I just traveled to the book of Ephesians. So, so we want to find out what Paul is saying to the church of Ephesus because he's telling them what has happened to them. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. He starts by saying, permit me jump, 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 jump and come over here. Jump from verse where three, to where? <laughs> chapter 1, verse 3. That's the first place. Let's jump verse 1. No, pray for jump Pastor verse Peter. 2. <laughs> We are the Speak out here. I take you, it. I you, take you're it. speaking in your, in your I take head. it. So, okay. verse 1, verse 2. chapter 1. We are verse 3. Verse it three. says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us when? With all he has in the past. That has happened to me. Mm -hmm. It has. Pastor Pony, you get it? That yes. happened to me. It happened it to happened me. It happened to me too. Okay, it happened to you too. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places oh. when it did not happen in 2020. That is not when it, when it happened. It happened way before I was even born, before the, before the, the foundations of the world. That's right. This is when it was done. Amen. So this happened to me. Ephesians 1 verse 3 has already happened to me. Amen. 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 So, child of God, I hope you're getting this, this whole thing of... Oh, happy birthday, Auntie Emma. Yes, you're counting your blessings one by one. They are countless. That's right. Amen. That's, That's right. right. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. So, so you can see what, what the Word of God is saying here, that th this blessing, it's done. Yes. It's not will be done. Mm -mm. It's done now. Hallelujah. We talked about you first, then the conditions follow. Mm -hmm. Look at it in verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him. Right. So this has already happened. The conditions come later on. Right? According he, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy. So God is not working on, on holiness on anyone now. He had conditioned us for holiness. That's the reason why the word of God says, um, um, the word of God says this. It says that sin shall no longer have dominion over right. you. This is Romans chapter 6. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. So we know beyond a shadow of doubt that victory had been wrought already. Yes. Amen. I mean, that's the reason why backsliders come back home. Amen. So a backsliding state is not a final state. No, it's not. It may be challenging, but it's not the final state. It's not the final state. The father has faith in himself and the word that he has released. He says in his word, he is able to present us to himself without Blameless and faultless. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what he is able to do. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So, Pastor Pauline. God believes in himself. He has faith. God believes in his word. He's faithful. He has sent forth his word and his word is not coming back void. He says as the rain comes down. Hallelujah. Right? Yes. And causes the earth to burn. Yes. So shall my word be that goeth Come forth on. out of my mouth. Amen. Child of God, there is a word upon your life that seems to be pending, seems to be delaying. There is news for you tonight, child of God. There is no surer word of prophecy. Come on. For your word from the mouth of the Lord is coming down to you. Fresh baked bread. Amen. Rushing to crush your enemies according to the book of Joshua. Joshua. So, God is saying something. Major returns. Major returns. And it begins with us. 
That's right. Yes. God yes. is good. So if you are listening to us and you are a backslider, you are someone who used to be so fervent for the Lord, on fire for him, and you feel like you're in that place where you're just dry and, and you've moved away from him, you've moved away from fellowship with him, and you're not even sure if he will take you back, we just answer that question. His arms are wide open. He's waiting for you to come home. So just come home. Come home tonight. Come home right now. In the name of Jesus. Don't waste time. Yeah, come in home. Fact, in fact, let me tell you this. Try not to come home is a pretense. Because everything has already been set for you to come home. Yeah. I mean, what are you doing out there anyway? Come anyway, home. Anyway, so, so here we are, Pastor Pauline. He's blessed us. Yes. This is something that has happened to us. So when you are doing your birthday, remember that he has blessed you. Yes. And Pastor Pauline, that's not all. Is it okay if we jump again? It's very okay. It says in verse 5, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of the children. Hold on. Jesus, who is the word, has already signed in the word and put in the wordings for us to be adopted. Yes. We had been adopted. It is sealed. <laughs> So now we Hallelujah. are in the family of the beloved. Yes. Pastor Pony, you know something about the, this adoption? And this is where it excites me. Earthly adoption is just about papers. But the adoption into the kingdom of God is an actual rebirth. Yeah. It is not pretense. Isn't that fascinating? It is not revocable. It's a mystery. Yes. It cannot be revoked. It's an actual rebirth. Yes. It's an actual rebirth. So, 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 Pastor Pauline, when we come out of the womb of the word, we cannot undo that because we are not the one who, we are not the ones who pushed ourselves out. See that? Oh, I am a child of God. That's exciting. Oh, yeah. We call him Abba Father. My Father. My Father. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Pastor Pauline, that's not all. That's not all, right? Okay. Are, are you sensing this glory? It's, I, I was going to comment on it. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. There's such a healing presence yes. and, and a sense of awakening. It's like there's a stirring, like we're talking about major returns. It's like there's this stirring in the hearts of the people and you can sense the move of the Spirit of God bringing his, uh, the healing presence of God and an awareness, an awakening yes. of what we, we possess and what we have as an inheritance. Come on. Yeah, so there's really no need to be fretting meanwhile you have so much already <laughs> pastor Pauline, thank you so Lord. verse six some other thing that has happened to me mm -hmm. this happened to me I, this happened to me i must tell the world to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made me accepted <laughs> in the beloved us me too <laughs> you, you have to own this thing, accepted guys. in the beloved we have been accepted in the beloved. There is no room for depression. Depression is a thief. A big time thief. It suggests to you that you are alone. Yeah. No one is coming to help you. You're going to die by yourself. Mm. Pastor Pauline, there are people right this minute whose greatest fear, they don't have any other fear. They are just yeah. afraid that they will die yeah, alone. The fear of dying alone. We rebuke that right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We Amen. rebuke that. Amen. It shall not be your portion. And you shall not die alone. Amen. The fear of the unknown. No, that's something that has happened to us. Yes. We have been accepted into the beloved. Verse 7 has also happened to us. In whom we have redemption. Redemption has also happened to us. Yes, it has. Ah, bought with the price. And it says, See? redemption through his blood, Thank you, the Lord. forgiveness of sins, according to his Thank riches, you, the riches of his grace. That has also happened to, to, to us. Yes. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. 
Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he had purposed in himself. So, Pastor Pauline, there is no such thing as, I don't know where I'm going to in Christ. If you are in Christ, you will know where you're going. That's right. Because he will reveal it to you. That too has happened to us. You are in him. He is not confused about where he's going. No. So, My God. Pastor Pauline, you want to see another thing that happened to me? Yes. It says in verse 11, <laughs> In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. An inheritance! <gasps> so I am not concerned about what family I'm coming from. In fact, that family is of no consequence. <laughs> because right here, I have an inheritance through him. That's right. Right? In whom also we have obtained an, an inheritance. inheritance. We have obtained an yes. inheritance. So it's not about the vehicle I drive, though that is included. Mm -hmm. A better vehicle has happened to me. Amen. <laughs> better vehicles have happened to me. Thank you, Lord. So there is better in Christ Jesus. Yes. So I know some of you have never really taken the time to go through the book of Ephesians, but you can see how many things have, have happened to you from the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. This is lovely. There's freedom in the house tonight. There's freedom there's, in the house there's tonight. Free, there's freedom. I, I, I don't know how many of you are sensing it. There's so much freedom. I, and it's beautiful because this is what Jesus was talking about. Preaching liberty. Yeah. Preaching liberty to the captives. So this proclamation, like yeah. you're saying, the preaching. Yes. The preaching of this good news mm -hmm. is causing us to come forth. God. Because you suddenly realize, wait a minute, I don't have to be poor. No. I don't have to be sick. Hmm. I don't have to have anxiety attacks. No. I'm not supposed to be panic driven. No. And all of this awareness is coming by the preaching of the word of faith. Yes. You shall know the truth. And the truth that you come to know shall make you free. Yes. Because you have been set free by the finished work on the cross. Yes. But your knowledge of this truth now is making you free. Right. You're coming into the manifestation because of the freedom. Because there is fulfillment the moment it touches your ears. It touches your, ears. your ear. So child of God, yes. one of your greatest prayers ever should be, Oh God, sanctify my ears. Amen. That I may hear your truth. Amen. Sanctify my ears. Sanctify my ears. That I may hear Sanctify my ears that I may hear your truth. In the name of Jesus. For it is important that we get to hear his truth. Yes. The word of God says the God of this world has blinded mm -hmm. the minds. Mm -hmm. So you begin to see. When he goes forth to blind the eyes of people, that they will not come to what has been done for them. They look at others and say, Wow, see favor in that person's life. Right. Meanwhile, it is what God has also done for them. Yes, that same grace has appeared unto all that men. That same grace has appeared unto all men. Amen. Hello, Pastor Laura. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome, man of God. So, so, so the Lord appeared is saying a lot of amazing things. Oh, hallelujah. These are the things that God has done for us already. Amen. The Bible says we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of, of promise. Uh, um, that's in verse 13. So you, you look at everything... I mean, I mean, come on. If you're celebrating your birthday, child of God, take stock from this. That's right. Don't be saying or, or taking stock from what happened to you, who called you, who didn't call you, who likes you, who doesn't like you, who what and who doesn't do what. It's of no consequence. Because our life and what has been done to it is right here in, in the, the word. word. Amen. It's right here in the word. In fact, Pastor Pauline, I don't even need to talk about Commonwealth of Virginia because I can talk about <laughs> the common Commonwealth world. of the body of Christ right here in the Word of God, Ephesians chapter Come 1, on. Ephesians chapter 2, um, and verse 12. These, these are the things that have happened to us. I'm part of a Commonwealth. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know, all Major through the Word of God. Major stock taking. That's right, Pastor John. Yes. 
Yes. This is major stock taking. Yes, yes. Okay. Seriously, if we really take stock of our lives the way you are explaining, yes. then there is no reason why you will find a child of God who is depressed. Mm -mm. There is no reason why you will find a child of God who is sad, who is victimized. Yes. Because you recognize that everything that has been done to you and for you by God supersedes anything that can possibly be done to you by circumstances. Mm -hmm. Pastor Pauline, you remember just a few days ago, we were having conversations and I, and I was talking about an experience I had with God where he was talking to me and he was saying, why do you think those things were happening? They were happening so that they can take you out of what has been given to you already. Oh my goodness. And then he was talking to me about not taking the venom from what has been done. <laughs> because it, it is very easy for you to say, for you to say, oh my God, that person treated me like this, so, so this and so that and so on and so forth. Now, you have to make sure you don't take that venom because the venom is available for you to take. Yeah. Now, if you take that venom, you will become what was intended. Yes. You become an embodiment of that thing. Yeah. And it's weird because you can see when someone is angry, you can see anger on them. It's like right. they literally wear anger. Yes. You know, and when the enemy comes at you like that, that's the goal. It's like when you want to go fishing, you get worms. Mm -hmm. You attach a piece of worm to the, the, the hook. As a bait. As a bait. It's right. called a bait. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the fish doesn't see the, the hook. It doesn't see the line, but it sees the worm. Mm -hmm. So it comes for the worm. Yes. And then it swallows the, the whole line. Right. You know, hook, sinker, and everything. Everything. That's how you are able to pull the fish out. And That's the enemy the tries to do the same with us. He throws a bait at you because he doesn't really have what it takes. Humans can swim. If you, you, you know, you can, I shouldn't say can't swim. You can live underwater like the fish can. Yeah. So if, if you go into his habitat without the proper gear, you'll be gone. Yeah. But what does a human do? He pulls the fish out with a bait. That's right. The enemy doesn't have what it takes to, 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 to torment us. What he does is that he throws a bait at us. And then when we take that bait, hook, line, and sinker, right. we end up being overpowered by the things we were meant to dominate. I, I remember we had this experience where, you know, one of the, 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 the children came and said, oh, such and such has done such and such to me. And, and I said, no, that person does not have what it takes to do that to you. <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 seriously, seriously, dad, that's what he did. I said, no, they don't have it. No, they, that's what they did, though. That's what they did, though. I said, but they don't have it. They don't have it. Listen to me, child of God. No one has what it takes. Oh, my goodness. To offend you, they don't have what it takes. <laughs> to derail you, they don't have what it takes. They don't have it. You remember my experience on Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was recounting to him an experience I had on Sunday morning. There was this fly. And I just said, this fly is annoying. This is an annoying fly. And come to think of it, I've been talking like that all my life. Because it's not the first time I'm seeing a fly. There have been all kinds of things where I'm like, this, this bee is just annoying. You know, you are having a barbecue at the park, for example, and there's just this fly that, or a bee that will just come. Like, this is so annoying. And so there was, I had this situation on Sunday with this fly. Ooh. And I'm saying this is an annoying fly. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit said, is that fly really annoying? And I'm thinking, yeah, it's an annoying fly. He said, do you realize that is just a fly you qualified it with the adjective annoying. annoying and when you qualify the fly and call it an annoying fly you are suggesting that you are annoyed by the fly so let me ask you again does that fly have what it takes to annoy you i was like heck no that fly does not have what it takes to annoy me <laughs> Then in that moment, I realized I've been talking like this all my life. Apostle Nokasin says, I set an impermeable barrier against the venom 
from all circumstances. That's right, man of God. In you need to set Jesus. that. You need to set that. You need to set that. You know, Pastor Pauline, you can't, none of us can, to a certain degree, stop things from happening. That's right. So we are not talking about immobilizing life. <laughs> right. It's not possible. <laughs> God just, not God God just do God, sh- like in the movie freeze no, everybody. No, 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 you can't freeze everyone. No, no, no. <laughs> God did not give you that in the name of Jesus. All right? You can you can do other things. I bind you and then you know you, you can bind the things that you know can be bound in the name of Jesus, but you can't bind life. Right. Life has to move forward because you are not the author of life. You can't right. bind, bind life. Mm. But this is what we are saying. We are saying that you have control over you. Right. By permitting the word of God continually incubate you to the point that there is an impermeable barrier. Yes. Yes. And you determine Whoa. what what your atmosphere yeah. will look like. You have the power to determine your atmosphere. Right. Irrespective of who is doing what. Right. Uh, and I think that's the, the, the lesson that hit me differently on Sunday when, when God said, are you suggesting that a fly has what it takes to annoy you? And I'm like, heck no, it doesn't. And I began to decree, not just concerning the fly, you know how I do it. I, a revelation hits my spirit, everything shifts. I spread it out to everything in my life. I started naming things. I'm like, you don't have what it takes to annoy me. You don't have what it takes to annoy me. You don't. And I was just spreading out to everything in my world like, no. None of these things have what it takes to annoy me. I get annoyed because I decided to be annoyed. Right. So I have given my power mm. to a fly my to God. annoy me. My no, God. I take my it God. back. And, and Pastor Pauline, it is the same concept with which at the Kange household, we keep on saying, I forgive you before you hurt me. Yes. Because just like we saw earlier on, if, if you're talking to an unbeliever and you're telling the unbeliever forgive, it will be very challenging because that unbeliever does not have what it takes yes. to forgive. Yes. That, just like we saw in the word of God, you would have to come out of that jail to be able to forgive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, forgiveness does not precede, but it is you coming out and Jesus has come to do that. Yes. That's what Jesus has come to do. So when Jesus stands on this side and then he proclaims to you that you are now free, you come out of that place and say, whoa, then there is no need for me to hold on. That's right. Amen. There's no need for me to hold on. I am not holding on to this or holding on to that. So that's it. You don't have what it takes to imprison me. No, you don't. I take that right away from In you. The name and of I give Jesus. it to Jesus. And since Jesus has no plans of imprisoning me, except the imprisonment of being his servant, then hello. On a serious note, if we can grasp a hold of this, if the revelation of this hits your spirit, I pray that light comes Come on. tonight into your being as you're hearing us talk yeah. because it will shift you completely from a victim mindset. In the name of Jesus. You know, when we're growing up, my brother used to be very annoying. That's that word again. And that's because the man was just never going to be offended by anything. And he used to say this thing, I, I, I don't, I'm not offended because I will not take offense. Right. And then the statement will make me offended. Right. Like those children, if you punish them, those children, you know, you, you, you punish them and, <laughs> and they make it a time for, for jokes. Yes. They, they play with it. They play with it. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. The, you know, the play. Oh, with them. my goodness. You know? It was supposed to be punishment. You give them time out. And then while they have time out, they're they have having so fun. much fun in they're time out. They're having so much fun at time out. <laughs> like, this is not the plan. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you have to decide, I will not take offense. Yes. Offense is given to you. You say, thank you very much, but Come I'll on. pass. Come on. You refuse to take it. You refuse to take the victim mindset. Woo. Because the moment you step into that <laughs> complaining mode, you are saying that thing has what it takes yeah. to overpower you. Mm-hmm. When you step into the murmuring and you say, oh, this person made me, or this person, 
that's why I'm angry. No, you gave that thing power over you. Right. And you are suggesting that that thing has what it takes. So, first of all, it's not supposed to. No longer are we aliens. No. No, that's what the word of God says in chapter 2. And it says here in black and white. It says in verse 13, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, mm. ye who sometimes were, uh, were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That has happened to me. That's right. <laughs> that has happened to me. That has happened to me. And the Bible says in verse 15, he said, There's been some Thank abolition. You, Jesus. I mean, I, I, you know, you could literally go through. You could literally go through the, the whole scripture and, and, and see what, what, what he's saying. So many things have happened to us, guys. So many things have happened to us. So I want to see something over here. Um, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Where are we now? Now, something that has happened to me. One more thing that has happened yeah, to me. Okay. <laughs> so this is in chapter 4 and verse 8. <laughs> oh my God, this is so good. It says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. You are in Philippians? No, Ephes Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Chapter 4. Verse, Verse eight. 8. There you go. Okay. He led captivity captive, right? And gave gifts unto men. This this has happened. It so, has. child of God, you are no longer captured. You are no longer under the, 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 the devices of the wicked one. Though he has devices. Mm -hmm. We are no longer, my God, his capacity to influence us with his devices has been neutralized. Yes. Neutralized. <laughs> oh, that's why I first started laughing. Stripped of his power. Stripped. <laughs> neutralized. So, child of God, let's understand this. God is speaking to us tonight. Yes. It is for freedom. Yes. It is for freedom. It is for freedom. It that is Christ for freedom. Has set us free. So, no longer to be subject to the, bondage. The, the tautology in that sentence, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's like you say, tail end. The tail is the end, is the and end? the end is the tail. <laughs> okay, so when you say it is for freedom that he set us free, mm -hmm. it's important to look at it yes. deeply. So the word of God is saying, he came to set you free. Hallelujah. Free so you might be free. So even tonight we are embracing the freedom of God. Yes. So we can because it is in accepting and embracing that freedom, declaring that freedom that we are free. Amen. Amen. First of all, I think the greatest news ever is the fact that all is in that when Jesus set us free. Like verse 8 says, yes, he ascended. Yes, he descended. But guess what? In doing that, he empowered us with gifts. Mm -hmm. So we were not, this is, a, this is very different from what you find in Leviticus. Mm -hmm. This is a step higher. In Leviticus, once Jubilee was declared, you went home, you're a free person. Mm -hmm. But Jesus did not leave it there. Yes, you're free. But I have some other things for you. I know you have to start life, you know. I know you have to enjoy life. I know, you know, so I am not just, you know, one of those people. I, I just saved you and I just leave you like that. No, listen, come. Get a robe. Mm. Let's, let's have a party come going on. on. Let's celebrate Hallelujah. because you were lost and now you're, you know. Yes. So, so now he, he employs you. That's the reason why the Moseses can be powerful men of God. The Hannahs can be powerful women of God. Anyone's life can be turned around. That's right. 
Anyone's life can be turned around. The harlots, the prostitutes, the, all of that. I mean, look at the people in Jesus' lineage. Hmm. That's a, a classic example of captivity being captured. <laughs> and that's what God is saying Thank to you, us. Lord. So, child of God, see what God has done for us. And, and, and as you as you begin to take this in and, and continue to take it in, you would see that God is in the business of taking you out of the prison and setting you in the palace. That's right. Amen. Amen. Out of the prison to the palace. Out of the pilgrim yeah. to the palace. <laughs> I like that, Apostle Nocos. In captivity is a captive here, not me. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thank That's you, right. Lord. And, and, so, and so this is what God is saying to us. There is nothing in this life that has what it takes to keep me locked down. Many children of God have been giving testimonies. In this season where there's been COVID-19 and people have been locked down, not doing what they're supposed to do, many children of God have given testimonies of double inc increase yes triple increase. yes their businesses have mm. skyrocketed things have happened i mean we've talked to people who moved from from a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars a year there to millions hmm. that is exciting that there's is very exciting down he says there's a lifting that's up. right that is the word of the lord we are in the world but we are not of the world and if we are not of the world then we operate by a different set of rules now, that's the point. Thank you, Jesus. We have just done like, um, you, how do you call this? An overview. An overview of the, of the book, book of, of Ephesians. Ephesians. Now, there's something here in the book of Ephesians still, mm -hmm. but this is Ephesians chapter 4. Okay. Right? Uh, I am going to read it. It says in verse 20, But ye have not learned so of Christ, because it was saying earlier on that, you know, we, we are not going by the feelings of the past. Right? And then he says here, If so be that ye have learned of him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former what? Conversation. conversation. So we now know that in the book of um um um, um in the in the King James Version of the Bible, conversation talks about lifestyle. lifestyle. But lifestyle doesn't exempt what people say out it of their included. mouth. Yeah. It is included in that. So we now know that we ought not to be talking from what we used to be. We are not talking from or having conversations from the, the, the occurrences while we were in jail. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we, we, we have to learn. He says, even as we've been taught by him. We have to learn how to give testimonies as people who are out of jail. Right. <laughs> Not testifying as if you are still in there. Not testifying as if you are like, in there. Like you are experiencing the pain right now. Yes, because some people do that and you look at them and you're saying, what's going on? Is it happening to you right now? Testimonies ought to be given from a place of absolute joy. Look what the Lord has done. Some people, some people are, are giving testimonies in a place of absolute joy. But tears are coming down. Hopefully. Yeah, because there's such a thing as tears of joy, right? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, that's what it, hopefully that's what it is. Not because, the one where you're trying to get everybody to feel sorry for you. Yeah. As, and then you cry as if you are going through the pain right now. Right. Meanwhile, you are testifying about something you've been delivered from. Right. In fact, in fact, the, the, the prophecy in a testimony, because when, when, when testimonies are going out, they are promoting, they are staring up prophetic words. Yes. So the best way of giving a testimony is on this side that shows what Christ has done. Yes. Hallelujah. I mean, it is exciting. It, uh, it's... When you started, you talked about 
when we declare the word of God, it causes us to come into a realm of possibilities. Yes, ma'am. I think there's the same thing a testimony is supposed to do. You know, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When you are giving a testimony, the people who are listening to you should be able to see the possibilities that exist in God. They, and it shouldn't be in a way that they see the possibilities in terms of, oh, God did it for this person. Hmm. When am I ever going to get to their level? No, they should be able to see possibilities in God as to suggest God did it for this person, he can do it for me too. Yes. Yes. And that's the reason why I love what verse 23 says right here. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. That ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. holiness. After God. Yes. So this takes us right back to 1 John chapter 5. It takes us back there. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, in even our, our faith. faith. And, and having said that, let's, let's look at that again, Pastor Pauline. Let's look at that right Thank here. For whatsoever Jesus. is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even, even our, our faith. faith. Faith is groundless if one isn't born of God. That's right. Faith is groundless. There's no basis for it. So faith is not positive thinking. No, it's not. It's not positive assertion. It is not naming it so you can receive it mm -hmm. faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing what god has said yes so faith is the resultant effect of the cumulative hearing of god's word yes once we hear and hear and hear and hear something begins to happen Ooh, to us oh yes so then we go back to the statement we made from the beginning because we just had to go around and, and come back on this other side. The statement that was made from the beginning was this. Faith comes... Oh, oh, oh forgive me. Not, not faith. Victory comes into your being first before you're able to access victory in the natural. Yes. So you are the product or your life is the product of the faith that has come into you. Oof. All right, let me check my life. <laughs> Your life is the product of the faith that yes. has come into you. Yes. So your life is the product of the word that you're listening, that to. You're listening to. And 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 right here, I, I want to take this opportunity to speak to, to just say this. We have one of our girls, one of our daughters, who likes listening to documentaries. <laughs> and um, she likes documentaries of um, unsolved mysteries. <laughs> documentaries that talk about how this one and then this one and then there was a mystery and then very soon this one went and cut the other one's head. Okay. <laughs> All right. The other day I was actually talking to her and I said, and I said to her, I said, you need to stop listening to these things because at some point, the only thing that is in your world is, wait a minute, who is going to do what now to who? And, and, and Who is getting decapitated next? Yes. I mean, it, it is going to affect your faith. It is going to, oh. listen. <laughs> Pastor Pauline, yes, sir. we are the product of, our life is the product mm -hmm. of. When you hear people say, and I did as the man of God said. It means that all through, after the man of God spoke, your life was not deterred by anything else. Right. You stayed on what was on said. On what was said, yes. That's what Joshua and Caleb said. And Caleb said it later on. <laughs> so, so we want to make sure that we see what we hear. Yeah. Filter what you hear. 
that's the reason why remember the story in Mark chapter 5 yes, I think it's Mark chapter 5 when um, Jesus was on his way to the centurion's house oh yes to Jairus's house mm -hmm. actually to to raise his daughter to heal the daughter at the, at the time it was to heal the daughter and there was this interruption by the woman with the issue of blood and the whole nine years she got her healing and she told the whole story and all of that and in the process of time while J Jairus was standing waiting for the master to continue the journey to his house because that's how it started it started with him going with the master mm -hmm. to his house so he, the master could heal his daughter then there was the interruption by the woman with the issue of blood that took a long time because after she got healed, then she told her whole story, the Bible says. <laughs> and in the process of all of this time, Jairus' Jairus's daughter died. Now, people came from his house to tell him, don't trouble the master anymore, your daughter is dead. And in that moment, I mean, that has always been major for me because each time I look at that story, it tells me how important it is to stay believing and how to be able to identify the deterrence of your faith. Because some, some, some people have a challenging time recognizing what is a faith deterrent. Yeah. When you are walking this path of faith, God has given you a word. You've been believing God for that word. You've been speaking that word over your life, making it part of your confession. Are you able to identify the things that come so, so to deter you from that? There is no better way of identifying those things than the word God gave us the other day. Matters arising. Oh Lord, yeah. Matters arising. There will always be matters, matters arising. arising. God has called you to the mission field. You hear that something? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. you hear that? <laughs> you hear yeah. that something is happening on this yeah. other side. Matters are rising. Matters are rising. And then you wake up. I don't want to say like I say to some of my people sometimes. Like, I can't even get it. But <laughs> you wake up and you're, where are you going to? Where are you going exactly to? Exactly where are you going? Exactly where are you going? <laughs> so, so, so people have to know. And that's something we practice. Yeah. Identifying the matters that are arising. Why is that matter arising? God said to me it will be the 25th. Now I'm hearing that there is a decree, you know, maybe the government is saying something and then, and now I'm panicking, maybe there will be no 25th. It, that, that is of no consequence. It is a matter arising, right? Like Jesus said to Jairus, I... I'm still going to your house. Keep on believing. You keep on believing. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, keep your appointment with Jesus and get away from listening to stuff that is released to really pluck your miracle away from you. Because it is the news that's coming from your house. That, that one that says, don't trouble the master anymore. That is the thing. That is the thing. That is the thing. Hey, Father, may we be able to recognize you know, matters arising. First of all, on more than one occasion, this has happened to me three times. Three times. And, and I do understand. Let me just say what I'm saying. On three different occasions, I have entered a shop with so many people, especially during this season. I've entered a shop with so many people and I had no mask on me. Mm -hmm. In the very, the very first instance, I'd gone through the entire store, finished what I was doing. Then, someone brought it to my attention that I didn't have a mask on. But I was already done. It happened again, and then it happened again. Now, the third time that it happened was to me kind of alarming. Because I stayed in that store, moving from aisle to aisle for at least one hour. 
It was a big shopping day. At least one hour. And Pastor Pauline, I finished and I stepped out. Got into the vehicle. Then I said, oh, I don't have a mask on. <laughs> now. And this time no one even came no, no, no over one, to you no to one. say, Sir, no one. you need to have a mask on. No one. The point here is understanding that we are in God's capsule. Yes. In Him we live and move and have, and our, have being. our being. We are covered by the grace of God. Amen. And the grace of God is not just a statement. This is real. Yes. It was John G. Lake who had viruses in his hand at a time in South Africa when people were dying in their numbers who said put the virus here and watch and see how the virus dies we are so encapsulated by yes. God yes, we that are. we ought to release ourselves for God to operate even more through us because there are always contradicting statements to faith always always now people have asked me why don't you have a mask on certain occasions so, uh, because i am fully conscious of my environment if i put on a mask in this environment i'll be contradicting my stance of faith In another environment, I'll wear the mask because it is required as a form of dressing. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. Yes. Just like when we used to go to the mission field and they would say to you, you're a woman. Mm -hmm. And um, especially this particular mission field we went to, they said you're a woman and women don't speak. Mm -hmm. That's what we were told there. And they also said you're a woman, you had to tie your hair. You have to veil yourself. It was a, um, um, an Islamic community and, and, and so on and so forth. And you couldn't wear pants. Mm -mm. That was a no-no. That is the expectation from that culture. Yes. So child of God, I need for you to put a clear demarcation between what the, the culture is pressurizing you to do and what fear is dictating of you to do. Oh, this is good. Stay there for a little because bit. Because fear could yeah. be saying to you, and by fear I mean your feelings and so on and so forth. That's why, Noella, women don't speak. That's bondage. You can, but you, you can see. <laughs> you, you can see. Bondage. You can see. Um, but it's a reality in some parts of the world. It that, is. That's that's just it. It is. That's just it. And 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 whenever you have that, which is where I'm going to, whenever you have that, irrespective of what the intrusion is, you have to, like Jairus, say yes to what Jesus is saying to you. You don't listen to that. Just keep believing. Yes. You don't listen to that. Keep on believing. And that's the reason why if someone came to me now and say, there is a vaccine for you to do something, I'm not taking no vaccine. You don't need it. I don't need it. And it is not the vaccine I'm looking up to. Right. The devil is a liar. In our household, it's not a problem that we don't have vaccine for flu. We don't have vaccine for... Uh, our vaccine is the blood of Jesus. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Jesus has done this for us you, on the cross. The Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. Yes. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. Thank you, Lord. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son hath That's not life. life. That is it, period. So in Christ Jesus, we celebrate what has been given to us. Yes. That which held us captive is now captured. Yes. 
and we are free yes and have been given gifts amen that is our status thank you jesus free and gifted free and gifted <laughs> free and yes. gifted and and this is what god has done for us on the cross amen. amen so if i'm going to somewhere and culture is saying this is where people sit that is what is ruling in that environment yeah you respect the protocol you have to and, show honor and we can thrive in christ jesus irrespective of that yes. because that is not an interference right to our faith it doesn't contradict scripture it's not it's not a sin it is not if, a sin. You, if you respect that so, protocol so, so understanding this is important and, and and god wants us to flow in it god wants us to flow in it so we have to be able to say it doesn't matter what the doctors are saying because whatever the doctor is saying doesn't have the power to keep me bound to sickness that's right it doesn't have the power to keep me bound to poverty. It doesn't matter what the economists say about the economy. Mm -hmm. Wall Street does not determine my wealth. Come on now. Amen. That's right. Stocks going up or going down. I mean, I, I teach on trading. Mm -hmm. um, stocks going up or going down. Currency going up or going down. Does not, it's of no consequence. Our provision because is fed the, his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. That is it. Because the same God who will tell you where to study, so you prepare for your exams, and the same God who will tell you where to, to, to go to, so you can preach well, right? So you'll have a message to preach. Mm -hmm. The same God who will give you a prophetic word so you can tell one of his children, is the same God who is going to tell you where you should invest. Yes. So you That's can right. have a return. That's right. Come on! Amen. That is Christ Jesus. That is it. Kingdom benefit. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It is the same God yes. who will tell you what business to do. Amen. And it will become profitable. Yes. Even the one where everybody says it is not going to work. Mm. <laughs> as long as you don't take in those words and they drown the voice of God. That's right. You cannot afford to let the voices of the people drown the voice of god in your being you have to keep on believing like jesus told jairus be not afraid keep on believing you have to keep believing refuse the fear in jesus name amen so pastor Pony, we have gone full circle mm -hmm. and come over here so we are not victims for whatsoever is born of god overcome at the world yes and this is the victory that overcome at the world even our faith even our faith so now we know all right now take note that the word of god said to us um, earlier on in the book of ephesians okay so let's look at that again thank you jesus Woo! And, and, and so, my God, my God, my God, hold on. Where are we? Ephesians chapter 4. Okay. So, it, 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 we, are, we are in chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And we are in, in verse 21. Okay. If so be it that you have heard him, you've been taught of him, that truth is, is in Jesus. So now we put off this conversation, right? Now, that's what we are told over there. Now, we also went through let me go back here well we're told we have to make sure that our minds are clear hold on where are we if you oh. in the spirit of your mind verse 23 yeah that's what i'm where are we ephesians 4 23 there we go it says and be renewed in the spirit of your mind so i want you to take note of that verse right and travel with me to third John. To third John. What does he say in third John? And now we are talking about third John 2. Mm -hmm. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. Even as your soul prospereth. Even, mm -hmm. even as your soul prospereth. 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 So, so here we are talking about your soulish realm. 
and your mind is part of your soulish realm. Yes. So, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And when you're renewed in the spirit of your mind, you would find that you are increasing on every side. Amen. You're increasing on every side. In, in, in the book of Psalms, um, um, Psalms 43 uh, and, and Psalms 42, um, David is speaking and he's saying, my soul, why are you cast down? <laughs> why are you cast down? Exactly why? I mean, we can uh, and we, we have to learn how to talk to ourselves like that. Yes. We have to learn how to, how to speak to your being. Right. When, commanding when, your emotions to align with the word of God. Yeah. When I was taking classes, I remember we took a class uh, about self-talk. Self-talk, because uh, it, was a <laughs> it was a powerful class. So it says Psalm, Psalm 43. 43. Let's look at verse 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? I mean, Pastor Pauline, there are several people, several people who need to ask themselves that question. And every now and then, every child of God needs to say, excuse me, my soul. What exactly are you doing right now? Yeah. You know how David said, the Lord said to my Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like God says to himself. We have to be able to talk to ourselves. Yes. Stop it. You know, those kind of things. <laughs> we have to be able to say that. It is so weird because we, 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 we tend to do it even subconsciously a whole lot in the negative than we do it in the positive. Yeah. We have a lot of, um, generally speaking, people have a lot of negative self-talk than they do positive self-talk. Right. So we have to be able to follow ourselves up and be intentional about talking to yourself from the positive perspective. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have these internal dialogues and if you don't follow yourself up, you discover you've had internal dialogues that push you into <laughs> negative behavior because you begin to manifest what that dialogue, the, what the conclusion of that dialogue was. Right. But if we can do that in the positive, we'll also notice that so many things will be different in terms of how we walk by faith and how we relate with other people. Yeah. You know, we, 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 this, this kind of things, let's follow the trend in Psalm 42. Right? Okay. You and 43. Yes. But let's, let's go to 42 and follow the trend. Okay. In verse one, it says, as the heart panteth after the water rose, mm -hmm. so panteth my soul after the O oh God, my soul testeth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been meat. Now, he's saying something. My tears have, have been, been my, my meat. meat. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Day and night, while they continually say to me, where is thy God? Now, first of all, we are following the trend, right? Watch this. This is someone who began by saying, I really want God. Then he says, he came into a place of tears, day and night, because people were saying, where is your, God? your God? Now, this kind of sounds like great, you know, like, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. But, but let's, let's follow the trend. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. This is a problem. That's what you see that? Yes. This is a problem. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise and with a multitude that kept holiday. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. This right here is major. 
Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember thee from the land of Jordan. So, so you can see, he is saying, you can see the two sides of the coin. Where he listened, heard what the people were saying, as he was also going to the house of God. So there was conflict. Child of God, I really want to ask you tonight, what company are you keeping? What company are you keeping? I'm talking about, even for people who say, well, I don't have friends, just two or three people that I know. That's not, that's not, that's not the point. It is also how many voices run in your head. Yeah. What company are you keeping? <laughs> that's big. How many voices run in your head? Yeah. What company are you keeping? Because the company you're keeping is also projecting an image yes. into your being. Yes. And if you are not deliberate, in asking your soul what the matter is, you will be finding yourself sinking because you're watching the boisterous wind. Yeah. So we can't afford this. So yes, why are thou cast down, O my soul? Hope in the Lord. Yes. He says, he says, who is the health of my countenance and my God? Oh my God. Is the health of my countenance. Sometimes you I look like at that. some people, they have gotten darker in the their countenance. Of my countenance. They have gotten darker in their countenance and you, you, you see um, ropes and, and chains in, in the spirit. You see it until they are liberated by, by joy. And once they are liberated, their countenance It is such is a healed. beautiful thing to see. I mean, you can behold the change. It's right. It's like day and night. Wow. Before you pray for someone, they look depressed, they look old, they look wrinkled. Mm -hmm. And once you're done with the prayer and they come into that place of freedom, you see the change in their countenance yes. almost immediately. Their face becomes bright and there's a glow. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, David is the one who's saying these things and in Psalm 119, 119 25 let's mm -hmm. let's let's look at this in, in Psalm 119 verse 25 this is what he says 25 let's start from verse 23 it says okay. princes also did sit and speak against me but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes mm -hmm. now this is what is right yes it doesn't matter who is speaking concerning you you meditate on the word on thy statutes in verse 24 it says that testimonies also are my delight and my counsel amen <laughs> oh but listen to what he says in verse 25 and, and this, this this right here is important my soul cleaveth unto mm -hmm. the dust quicken down me according to thy I'm word sure. So there are times when your soul is cleaving to the dust and you're wondering, am I going to survive tonight? And that's because of the thoughts that are going around your head. So we have to know how to, to break that cycle yes. by embracing the word or taking hold the of the word. And, 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 and your testimonies are my delight. My counselors. And my counselors. Ah, this is powerful. So child of God, whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Even Today we have looked at different ways in which you build your mind. Yes. So you can step into victory. Yes. You, where you take on the word. So the word can make you a victor. So you can have victory. Yes. Amen. So we are committed to our victory. So we are going to take in the word that is able to make us victors. And when we are taking stock of our lives, we go to the word of God <laughs> like we did an overview of good. the book of Ephesians yes. tonight. In him we have redemption. In him we have the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. In him this, in him that, you know, of whom this, this, this. So we see all of that in the word of God. That's important. And when we do that, 
we shed off the instruments of unbelief. Amen. We shed yes. off the words Thank you, Lord. that incapacitate. We mm -hmm. shed off the words that are coming to derail us from what God has said. So for everyone who's listening to me tonight, everyone who's listening to us tonight, know this, child of God. He is the glory and the lifter of your head. Amen. When men say, ah. there is a casting down, you will declare, oh, there up. is a lifting up. Amen. Because you know and understand the God of your salvation. Yes. And so even tonight, Thank you, Lord. we yield to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We yield to the Lord. For he quickens with his word. Amen. He quickens with his word. Yes. We rest in him. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's a quickener. Ooh. He's a quickener. He's a quickener. Our mind is established. Scripture says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So we guard our hearts with all diligence, for out of it proceed the issues of life. There are things that are scheduled to come your way, and those things are only hindered because of the things that are blocking your inner man from coming into full victor mode. So we need to get rid of the victim. The victim is a blockage. Yes. The victim is a blocker. When you begin to see yourself as being disadvantaged, mm. when you see yourself as coming from the lower side of the baggage, mm -hmm. yeah, things really begin to go very rough for you. Because the more the children of Israel saw that there was something different that is considered better, the further and further away they, they got from their inheritance. I hope you're listening, child of God. Were there no graves in Egypt? How about the cucumbers and the leeks? Yeah, leeks? at least over there we were eating <laughs> cucumbers and leeks and, and garlic. But they, they forgot that the food was free because they were not. Yep. Child of God, I hope you heard what Pastor Pauline just said because it kind of just went over there. The food was free because they were not free. I hope you got that. I hope you got that. Tonight we are celebrating Jesus. Yes. In him we live and move and have our being. The Lord God, <laughs> the creator of heaven and earth, is our shepherd. Yes. And because of him we shall mm. not lack. Amen. So we refuse to see ourselves as victims. We refuse to see ourselves disadvantaged. We refuse to see ourselves on the begging side because we are not beggars. We have an inheritance in him. It is in him that we live and move and have our being. He supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And I love the exercise that Pastor Peter did tonight, taking us through the book of Ephesians to show us what has already been done to us. Yes. <laughs> That's a good way of taking stock of your life with the word of God, looking at what has been done to you. Because most of the time when we talk about what has been done to us, it's always negative stuff that gets us depressed and make us feel like we are victims and we are powerless under the, the influence of whoever and whatever. Yep. But when we begin to look at what has been done to us mm -hmm. by God, by the reason of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, yes. then you, you literally feel those weights fall off. You can square up your shoulders and lift your head high, recognizing who you are in him. Yeah. I'm a success. Amen. I am victorious. I am a victor in Christ Jesus. Yeah. My goodness, I overcome the world. I look just like my dad. Can you see the resemblance? Right. So, 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 Pastor Pauline, there, wow. there, is, there is something here tonight. Every one of us needs to 
get into ourselves, so to say, and and check and see where we have empowered the enemy. Right. What excuses we have created for where we are, because that is a deception. Yes. That is a deception. You have been made to believe that the conditions have to be okay and then you will be okay. Not realizing that the deception in that, hmm. the deception in that is you were made okay before the foundations of the world. Come on now. And when Jesus came and died, he certified, permit me say, your okayness. <laughs> That's right. Okay. He certified my okayness. Yes. He certified That's your ac okayness. acceptable English on Kanga household of Yes, only there, only there. <laughs> he certified your okayness. He certified your status. He, he said, this is what I have done for you. Yeah. So he did it. So now we can go out and practice it. Amen. Amen. It is not the other way around. It's not the other way around. It is not the other way around. So we have to stop qualifying things and making ourselves victims. Based on the circumstance. Based on the circumstance. On the contrary, we determine what is. Amen. So, so a, a, <laughs> so we're like thermostats. You know, you know what the Holy Ghost just said to me? No. I'm going to tell you. I was going to say, a poor person can say, he said to me, no. He said, a person who has needs. Oh. So a person who has needs can be found in the desert mm -hmm. and triumph in the desert because from the naked eye, the shallow eye, that's what I mean, mm -hmm. They are someone with needs. But who is this person with a need? It is a wealthy person who has not taken what fills the need. But they are very wealthy. Don't be deceived. So now that they are in the desert, they are able to practicalize the wealth that they have and enrich the place and make it an oasis. My but you will not see that coming because you think they are poor. Right. No, they are not poor. They are not poor. Oh, no, they are not. That's why Paul says, as though poor, yet making many rich. That's right. Because they, they are not They poor. are not poor. You can say, oh... She is so frail because now she's 94 years old. But when she lays hands on you, <laughs> you get healed in an instant. That's right. Now, you can consider her frailty to be a symbol of sickness, ill health. Oh, no, but she is packed with the grace of God for healing. Amen. And child of God, I hope you are understanding what the Spirit of the Lord is saying Thank to us you, tonight. Jesus. A minister yeah. without a portfolio they don't need to have 50 churches. But they will cast a demon. I can tell you that. That's right. So when we think it is because of the number of ministries or churches under us that make us the man of God or the woman of God, then we'll miss it. And that's a deception. That's a deception. That's a deception. So we are so we can manifest it. We don't manifest it so we can be. We lay hands because we carry the healing power of God. We don't lay hands so the healing... So, so that we can carry the healing. No, so the healing power of God can come. Can come. <laughs> we lay hands because it had come. Because it's there. It's there. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Yes. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I had a beautiful time in His presence <laughs> And I hope you did the same. Pastor Peter, God set some people free from depression tonight. Amen. And I'm excited oh, about that. Oh, <laughs> Bishop. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> What's the point? He says in his word, if the fig tree does not produce, if the animals don't produce, that's my scripture. If nothing is producing, I will be progressing. So no external circumstance will determine my internal health. I will rejoice. I'm going to say and that again. I will make spiritual progress. No external circumstance, no external circumstance will determine, determine my internal health. My internal health. Amen. 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 No external circumstance will determine my internal health. Thank you, Jesus. So change all the adjectives you had given to some things. If you were like me, that was qualifying the fly as annoying. Change it. So you can stop being annoyed by it. Change the label. Like we, we had a broadcast about you being the authentic namer. Change the label that you have put on things. Because based on the label... It's re the, the label you have put on those things is reflecting on how you carry yourself. You have labeled something and based on the label, you have become the victim. Meanwhile, you have been called to have dominion over that circumstance. So we are changing those labels tonight. Because circumstance don't have what it takes. to move us away from what God has done for us and from what move, to move us from what God has given us. We've taken stock of our lives tonight, going through the book of Ephesians, like an overview. I pray that you make that part of your, your routine. Incorporate that into your, your, your routine, your meditation routine, your devotion. But be intentional about taking stock based on the word of God. Don't take stock of your life based on your peers. Don't take stock of your life based on what is happening with other people on Facebook. Don't take stock of your life based on your circumstances, your, 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 your doctor's report, your credit report. Don't take stock of your life based on the word of God. Whose report will you believe? We choose to believe the report of the Lord. Because indeed, there's so much that God has done for us and to us that demonstrate how much of a victor we are rather yes. than a victim. Yes, yes. Thank you, you know, Jesus. You know, child of God, you could open your mail and see a bill and instantly a voice comes to you and says, see, if you are taking that job now, <laughs> you pay this bill easily. Right. The trick in that statement is not whether the statement is true or false. The trick in that statement is hidden in the fact that the person who initiated the conversation isn't talking to you about anything else but had you taken that job, you would be. So he has distracted you from your sonship and made the conversation about a job. Now, if you're not keen in the spirit, you will respond to the conversation about a job. No, it is never about a circumstance. Never. You must take the conversation back to who you are in Christ, in Christ Jesus. Jesus. See, you are too loose, that's why. So they have brought the conversation to whether you're loose or not loose. Mm -hmm. And you will want to respond from that standpoint. Instead of minimizing what was said and said, oh no, as a child, child of, God, of God, I'm immune. Amen. To that thing you're doing. Amen. 
Amen. The Lord provides for me. Amen. This is an important child of God. Abba is my source. Not Every time the enemy says something, he drops you down to being a common person. But you're not common. No, I'm not. You see, if you had prayed, this would not have happened. Right? Mm-hmm. Pastor Pauline. Mm-hmm. Child of God, I want you to, please, I plead with oh, you in the name of the Lord. The Lord God of heaven and earth will never accuse you. Mm-mm. Hear me today. The Lord God of heaven and earth will never accuse you. At least his word has not shown us that he will. No. And he calls Satan, the no, devil, the accuser of the brethren. Mm-hmm. So, when he comes and says to you, Ah, oh my God. Pastor Evelyn, there's something that has been in my being and that I need to say to you. And I just needed to, to, to say that, so I will say it to you. When he comes to you and says, had you prayed, things would not have gone this way. What has he done? He has dropped you from a son who gets from the father, period, mm-hmm. to a son who conditionally receives. Right. That is a deception. That is a deception. So it doesn't matter how the picture is painted. Whether it is painted as, as had you prayed. Oh, everyone else was fasting. You were not fasting. That's why you're having um, car breakdown. Hmm. Oh. Oh no, devil, get away from my stuff right now. Right this minute. Fasted or no fasted, you have no business touching my stuff. Take your hands off my stuff right now. Get get out of this garden. We must chase him and show him that we know better than he. Amen. Kick him out of the garden. <laughs> Listen, guys, there is nothing like the that. devil should say. I like that. <laughs> that sure should amount to anything. That's right. It's like someone having to 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 do some things that they have to do with documents. Oh, had you submitted those documents, this would not have happened. Oh, excuse me. I don't live in the realm of documents. I hear what you're saying, but I'm not of the realm of documents. Let's make it straight. <laughs> like Let's that. put it where it belongs. Because God makes you get the benefits of the home bond while you're an alien. Amen. It has nothing to do with papers. Amen. Amen. Even the prayer of the most terrible. Terrible Even the prayer of the most terrible shall be delivered. Shall be delivered. Yes. So we must understand. Listen, guys, it doesn't matter what the excuse is. Amen. Oh, you Amen. know, as women, we cannot be talking about inheriting. Go and ask the doctors of Zelophahel. Oh, yes. They are going to show you. They, they are going to show you that as women, they can petition. Yes. Child of God, do not take any Come excuse. Come on. Amen. Do not take any excuse. People, people have sat down. Um, Pastor Evelyn, I said I was going to say something to you. I saw in the spirit. I saw in a vision today during the broadcast, which is ongoing right now. <laughs> but I saw something standing in front of you. And I noticed that you were busy going about your stuff, not knowing it was standing in front of you. And in the vision, I saw this thing that was standing in front of you. It looked like a robot. And it sent its hand and began to rip some things off of you. And it did not only rip things off of you, it also began to snatch your hand from some things that were holding you. And then I heard the voice of the Lord speak, come forth. It came forth. And the voice of the Lord began to say, my daughter, I have freed you, Thank you Lord. 
from the things that held you captive. I have freed you from that which put you down. And when I talk about put you down, I'm talking about words that break the bones. Words that suggest one is nothing. And it began to pull, pull, and take you off of those things. And then I began to see right there that it was as if there were like um, uh, um, electric cables that were coming from different places and were all in your skin. And, 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 and as I looked at this and I began to see that there are times that you have acted because of what such and such and such and such, almost like someone who was taking energy from others to be what they are. And God said, I should tell you, that watch and see the season that's coming before you. Many will wonder the growth they have seen. Many will wonder how come you have come this far. They will begin to realize you're no longer functioning from where you used to be. Because of the level of liberty and the level of, of freedom, the level of boldness that you'll be moving in. And God says, no one understand that fruits will come to you. They will come. And many around you will begin to say, well, but we don't know how like that. Well, now she's pompous. Now you're just doing stuff. Please take note of that word, that, that sentence. They will say, now you're just doing stuff. But God said, understand this. I will animate you for my glory. Amen. God said he will animate you for his glory. Thank you, Jesus. For he will bring himself glory. Like he said to Moses, I'm going to get me glory over Pharaoh. I am going to get me glory over Pharaoh. And I also see that there is, I don't want to call it a replacement. But I see you coming into some new relationships. And I see these relationships fortifying. And people are going to say for some of them, but this person is not from your area. This person is not from the nation that you're coming from. So what is going on here? And God says, don't worry about that because this is my doing. And I will do it perfectly, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Now you go and enjoy because God is going to make good on his word. Good on his word in the name of Jesus. So, so yes, Pastor Pauline. Oh, Haraman Bushet. <laughs> So may it be so in your life yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. May it be so. May it be so. May it be so. May it be so. In the name of Jesus. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Is, is Bishop still here? Rabba Bashan. Bishop, are you still here? There's a word from the Lord for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bishop Henry, are you still here? Hallelujah. Okay, very good. Man of God, I see a change of seasons coming for you. Even while on the broadcast today, the Lord highlighted your name to me. And he said, you've been in a place of seeking his face. And he said, I should let you know that there is a change of seasons that's coming for you. I saw in a vision one path. And then I saw in that same vision another path that began to be weaved. And when I looked at the path, I saw as if you were making an eight in your travel and i began to look at this and i began to see that the lord was bringing you into a new place of glory the lord is bringing you into a new place of glory there is a there, you, you, there, <laughs> there is a twist in the paths so get ready because something new is being ushered into your life Thank you. something new is being ushered into your life and and god is is causing Malato 
Bentuna skiton na nyamote prana kutera. E nadi brandos ke prano lo hambas kute ke muskani ke pena. O leki brandos ka parando shimia kondele me. This is a time for you to be intentional about your direction. For God is bringing you into a new place. And there are people who are coming who are going to stand with you. I see them in the spirit. And God is causing them to sharpen their, their spears as it were. And as they are sharpening their spears, they are coming. These are going to be men and women of war. They are going to be men and women of battle. There is a transition that is taking place. And even in the place where you are, I see that there will be a sign. And that sign shall be the overflowing of water. There shall be an overflowing of water. And when this sign comes, no, because over the next three years, there shall be some things that will happen, geographically speaking, and they shall shift the trajectory of things where you are. And they will also shift things for you in that nation. And this men of war will begin to come. They will begin to come for they are rising. They are getting themselves ready and the Lord says they are coming. And when they come, there will be such a shift. And I hear the Lord saying, fear not. For even as you have begun to build, your hands will finish the building. Amen. Your hands will finish the building. Amen. For you will also come, says the Lord, into a place of multiple travels. There will be many journeys. There will be many journeys that are coming. I see the gates. And I see the posts standing without anything that's obstructing. So know of a surety, says the Lord, that you will travel and the barriers that were there before now will no longer be there. You take the time to seek the face of the Lord. And God said, Behold, I have brought my answer to you. I see even now structures in the spirit precisely structures that have to do with the mountains and god is saying i am taking out of your path this day demonic spirits from the mountains that have been standing before you i'm taking them out of the way the same way that i rebuked darkness out of the life of joshua even this day you're coming into a new place says the lord it shall be a plain level ground it shall be a plain level ground for many shall wonder what has happened what has happened how did it come to this place and god says i'm sending people from far and wide even as the chariots are coming and the camels are coming know that provision is coming to you provision is coming to you and i'm going to settle you says the lord i am going to settle you says the lord i am going to settle you says the lord and i am going to make you a voice in your generation a voice to your people and a voice a voice a voice of reckoning says the lord la la branda sadaka munda sha i bless you father e karanolo pro goda la bragada la shete la brehe mi kavandolo sho bragada so get ready for increase get ready for increase open your eyes samarado sha brehe da la bra open your eyes and open your ears for the lord shall speak to you and give you direction and do that right early e le kaprandolo ba sha but remember there shall be a sign of the waters coming um 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 and of a flowing of the waters remember that remember that it shall be a sign unto you that things have shifted. Things have shifted. Things have shifted. Things have shifted. And get ready. For the building shall not be a small one. It shall not be a small one. It shall not be a small one. So do not think of yourself small. For this is going to happen miraculously. It's going to happen miraculously. It is going to happen <laughs> miraculously. It is going to happen miraculously. They will talk about you. And they'll say, wait a minute, this is not possible. Mm. Ha, no, 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 this is too quick. 
But God says it shall be all me. Amen. So Father, even tonight, even tonight in the spirit, right here, right now, we lay our hands upon your son. We release him into this new thing that you're going to do for him. We release him into that grace in the name of Jesus. This thing is coming to pass. This thing is coming to pass. Amen. It is coming to pass. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is coming to pass. Thank you, Jesus. It is coming to pass. Thank you, Lord. It is coming to pass. <laughs> Pastor Peter, when you were praying for him, when you began to pray, I saw as though God took him back. Like he was standing, you began to pray, he was standing here. It's like God pulled him backwards. And when he was pulled backwards, it was so he could grab his wife. So he, God took him backwards and he held his wife's hand. And then God propelled both of them forward. There was a, a, a speed to it. It was so quick. And it was like God was doing a very quick walk. God is doing a very quick walk even with your wife because... It's like for you, you, you will make a, a couple of steps forward and then you will slow down because you want to catch up. It's like you're, you're walking with somebody who, who has shorter steps than you. The analogy I can give to it is when we go walking together. Yeah. Your strides are longer. Mm -hmm. So after a while, you have to slow down to wait for me. Yeah. That, that's exactly what I saw. In the realm of the spirit and god did when you began to pray it's like as as you finish giving the word and you began to pray god took him back and he grabbed his wife's hand and then god propelled both of them with speed so um man of god i believe that there's not going to be any more of let me slow down to wait so she can catch up but there's there is a quick walk that god is doing that is causing both of you to go full force so there might be Instructions that he will give you that will literally be you grabbing her hand. Don't hold back because it's going to be part of the, the propelling. Yeah. But things have shifted. That was beautiful. You know, Pastor Pauline. Oh, the, you said I grabbed her indeed. <laughs> the, there, is, there is something yeah. here. Thank you, Jesus. With, with this... With this man of God. Yes. And 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 Bishop, listen to, to to what I believe God is saying. You are part of a company. I want to say this carefully. You are part of a company. And that's wonderful. But this next season of your life will seem to suggest that you are going out. Please hear me very well. It will, it will seem to suggest you're going out because this quote unquote going out will bring you into some new things. It will bring you into some new things and some new relationships. So my prayer is that you'll be discerning as you move. Because invitations will come and it will seem to suggest that you are no longer collaborating in within your company. But understand what God is saying. He is saying when that begins to happen, he is the one doing it. Because he would bring you into this connections with these warriors. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you need to flow with that. Because like I said, there was a path and another path was weaved. Mm -hmm. So get ready for some geez. interesting things to happen. Get, 
Get ready. Get ready. For God is not a man that he should lie. Father, Neither the son of man that he should repent. But he's going to make this. He's going to make this good. He's going Thank to make you, this Jesus. good. He's going to make. He's going oh, to make this good. Shabada. In the name of Jesus. Wow. Marabu Mushiata Rabakataya. Hindere Mosondoriarama Kashanda Radakas. There are some people tonight that God is waking up. God is waking you 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 up. Thank you, Lord. God is waking you up. Thank you. God is waking you up. There's a change of seasons. Yes. In the name of Jesus, change of seasons. Get ready for the change of seasons. It's here. Change of seasons. In the name of Jesus. The Lord said to us that November, things were coming together yes. in the month of November. Convergence. It's convergence. So get ready for convergence. We would love to give you an opportunity to give your offerings to the Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're going to be having Minister Nettie tonight and Minister Ashley for our offerings. But all oh, that God is good. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. 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 Koraba shanda rababa kusokorolo bo shanda Major return, major return, major return. Minister Margaret says, Great teaching, Pastor Peter. Blessing to you, servant of God. Thank you very much. God bless you and your household. God bless you and your household. God bless you and your household. Minister Margaret, I think I'm hearing the Lord say something concerning you. Hey, hey, hey. Minister Margaret, Malo Sokoro Moshanda Yakomodayama. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. Orayanda Rabayanda. In Aramondo Sotoro Lobo. Great are you, Lord. Woman of God, I saw as it were a wind that blew through your home. I saw as it were a wind that blew through your home. This is a demonic storm. A demonic storm that accessed your home. And, and by your home, I see that it's not just your home as a house, but it began to affect other matters concerning you and your household. But I also see that tonight, the head of that snake has been cut off. The head of that snake has been cut off. It has been cut off. So in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the hand of wickedness against your life. In the name of Jesus. I mean, it's like I'm standing in front of a house and I'm, and I'm understanding that this house is your house. I'm understanding that this house is your house. And as I look at this house, I can see that wind, how it came. And I see that there's a first floor, but then it headed up on up upstairs. It moved on upstairs. So tonight we rebuke that hand of wickedness that came against your household in the name of Jesus. We we'll speak peace. We speak recovery. Yeah, that's right. That's right. For everything that had been lost, health, finances, 
We speak recovery now. In the name of Jesus, recovery. In the name of Jesus. I say recovery in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Be exalted. And God will perform miracles regarding your kitchen. God will perform miracles regarding your kitchen. Regarding your livelihood. Regarding how you feed others. God shall perform a miracle in this area of your life. In the name of Jesus. Again, I speak recovery in Jesus' name. Recovery. Thank you, Father, for peace. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Recovery. To you. Recovery. 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 In the name of Jesus. Recovery. Recovery. In the name of Jesus. Recovery. Recovery in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. My God. My God. My God. My God. There's someone who's been healed right now. Pain to the side. Harabushandarala. You have pain on the side of your left leg right below your stomach area, right there, around your groin area, there's pain. And God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Minister Margaret, it shall, it shall look like, I mean, I'm coming back to you. It shall look like a resurrection. I hear the word resurrection concerning you, Minister Margaret. I hear the word resurrection concerning you. So even now we release the grace for resurrection for you, your husband, your household. We release that right now in the name of Jesus. Be exalted, Father. Yes, you're faithful. Faithful, you're faithful. Oh, <laughs> Fuma Gerald, Fuma Gerald, Fuma Gerald. Thank you, Lord. Ye Karabobo Shanda Rababa Kasanayanda. Lord, I pray for your son. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your hand that's upon his life. Gerald, the hand of the Lord is upon your life. It's upon your life, and I see God bringing ease. You are also one of those who's gone through some, some very trying times. You've gone through some very trying times, Gerald. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and the Lord is intervening in your life. Gerard, the Lord is intervening in your life. There is actually a calling upon your life, Gerard, man of God. There's a calling upon your life. Even tonight, some things that have been spoken have been confirmations to you. You see, so I don't even need to repeat them. They have been confirmations to you and, and the Lord has been fine-tuning some things. Yes, Gerald. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a pulling. There's a call. There's a pulling into a place of intercession. And as you begin to intercede for people, there are times when names will just come up in your being. Names will just come up in your being. And, and, and this is so interesting because when you are in that place of intercession, sometimes names will just pop up of people you don't even know. But it's because of that place of intercession that God is calling you into. When, when these things begin to really, 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 really,
become um, um, prevalent in your life. Follow the voice of God. Follow the voice of God. Follow the voice of God. Follow the voice of God because in the, in the midnight hour, sometimes even at 3 a.m., just, just take what God is saying and take it into a place of prayer because I see that there is a revolution in your life as far as the call of God upon your life is concerned. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Where are you watching from? Gerard, where are you watching from? The devil is a liar. We rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Gerald shall experience freedom. He will experience liberation in the name of Jesus. You are, you are a child of joy. You are a child of joy. God has put much humor within your being. It has given you a unique way of transmitting the message of the good news. Dubai. You're watching from Dubai. He has given you a unique tongue. I mean, you can speak with charisma. Don't let that die. The enemy has fought to take away joy from you. But go, go in the righteousness of God and watch and see what God is going to do for you. For he, even, even in that place of hardship, he will pull you out. My God. There's something about you. Even if things are tough, you still rejoice. And because of that, God will bring you into multiple places of certainty so that you can really walk in the victory that he has called you to walk in. But the hand of God is upon your life for ministry. Remember that. Remember that. And let intercession take you through. Let intercession take you through in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Lord, I pray for your children all over the world tonight. I pray, O oh God, that your peace will rest upon them. That your love will rest upon them. That you will begin a good work, O oh God. That you will take it through to the end. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ethel, do not lose your smile. Kayuma. Ethel Kayuma, do not lose your smile. Do not lose your smile. Yeah. You're like someone who is um my God, like a little shoot that is coming up. And so many things are poking you left, right, you know. Do not lose your smile, beautiful woman of God. Do not lose your smile. The Lord God is with you. And you shall not only prevail, but you shall win. You shall win significantly. Trust in the Lord. Hang in there. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. He is faithful that promised. May his countenance shine upon you. May he bring you into good days in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Bishop, I, I see your name again. Remember, the next three years in front of you are going to be very significant years. Three years in front of you. Three years. Very significant. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Praise God, Gerald. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hello, Minister Judy. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hello, Rachel. Rahel. Fazio. God bless you. God bless you. Good to have you on. Mm. 
Marabroshana. Let me give you this word. Fazio Rahel, I, I want to give you this word. I hear the Lord saying, these are the days of your elevation. You have come into some days of elevation, woman of God. You have come into days of elevation. And because you have come into these days of elevation, do not let anything tell you that there is no way for you to come back. I hear that. That there's no way for you to come back. For God has said, He has prepared this season to be a major season of come back. Come back. Come back for you. Yes, yes, yes. There is a great calling upon your life, woman of God. Open yourself up for God is a God of possibilities and he's bringing you into a, a place of possibilities. Fazio Rahel. You are more than you see yourself to be, woman of God. You're more than you see yourself to be. You're more than what you see yourself to be. Go after the Lord. There's a major comeback for you, woman of God. There's a major comeback for you. And I see that there is a trip. There is a trip you will be making. My God. There is a trip you will be making. Rahel, let me know you're hearing what I'm saying. There's a trip you'll be making. God is, is stirring up some things on your behalf. God is stirring some things on your behalf. So get yourself ready. For there is a major comeback for you. <laughs> there is a major comeback for you, woman of God. There's a major comeback for you. There's a major comeback for you. Get ready, for God will not fail concerning you. He has not abandoned you. He has not abandoned you. That's right. He has not abandoned you. Don't feel like you have been abandoned. There is more for you, woman of God. Listen to me. Listen. 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 God has something for you in the pipelines. God has something for you in the pipelines. God has something for you in the pipelines. God, you, you, you have, my God, you have spent your time for patience. Now it is time for God's action. God is working on your behalf and a way has been created for you. A way has been created for you. Woman of God, you shall see God in ways that you never, my God. You, it, it's like in ways that you only saw afar off. And you were wondering like, will this ever be my story? Woman of God, get ready. For oh yes, this will be your story. So Father, I thank you for this woman of God and what you're getting ready to do in her life. To you be all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Whoa, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm very excited. Woo! <laughs> okay, thank you, Jesus. My God, um, we're just going to shift and then take our offerings. But remember, we are going to be back here in a few days. And God is going to be saying more things. We're going to be looking at the word of God and praying some more in Jesus' name. Yes, Yinka, God bless you. God bless you. God bless all of you. It's always wonderful being with you. Yes, Pastor John. Yes, Felicity. Fire, fire, fire. You're welcome. You're welcome, Fazio. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hello, Minister Ashley. Hello, Pastor Hello, Peter. hello, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? Good. <sighs> Hallelujah. There's just such a, a, I don't know, fire, a bubbling. I, I, as, as God was speaking to his people, I was just taking hold and laying hold of every word that talked about restoration, every word that talked about redemption, every word that talked about payback and back pay. And God talk to us tonight from the book of Ephesians and I just want to share Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 it says all praises to God the father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing 
in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. That is what has happened to us. So we are able to boldly say that our lines had fallen for us into pleasant places. That is what had happened to us. We have made spiritual progress. That is something that has happened to us. That is what has happened to us. And tonight, as you give your offerings, I want you to bear that in mind. That all of these things, God has loaded us daily with benefits. That is what has happened to us. So we can rejoice and be glad. We can rejoice. We have stepped into the liberty that comes with salvation. The joy that comes with salvation. Hallelujah. It is our day of jubilee. It is our day of rejoicing. It is our day of celebration. It is our day of coming forth at, like a coordination, if you will. So we can boldly declare the word of God because we have stepped into the freedom that salvation has brought for us. Hallelujah. That salvation has granted us. There is joy in salvation. There is joy in the Holy Ghost. There is beauty in the Holy Ghost. There is beauty in salvation. There is abundance of life, joy, peace, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so we're stepping into that with our offerings right now. Hi. Woo. I rejoice and I am glad. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's laughter yes. in the kingdom of God. Absolutely. There's joy in the kingdom of yes, God. There is. There is peace in the kingdom yes. of God. And I was just thinking about how it's so funny how we have a man like Paul who rejected the gospel, who rejected Jesus, telling us this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And you would think with everything, let's just listen to him. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much freedom in liberty in the presence of the Lord, in, in being in Christ. And I appreciate, and I've been reading Ephesians and actually studying it, and just to know that we have these spiritual blessings in heavenly places, is it's amazing. It's a yeah. blessing in itself. Yeah. yeah. So it's a blessing to know that we've been loaded daily with benefits. Yes. So as you give your offering, I want you to have that in your mind. 301-900-9102 yes. is the number for offerings. You can give via Cash App or Zelle. That is on the screen. You want to pray? Sure. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you. Go ahead and lift up your offerings like we do over thank here. You, Jesus. We just give you praise, oh God, for um, the reassurance of your word, Father. Yes, Lord. That your word is light and it's life and it brings understanding Amen. to the simple. Amen. Father, you continue to pour yourself Amen. out to us because you want us to be in this place where we can stand flat-footed and say, we trust in your word. We trust in you. So, Father, we thank you for continuing to enlighten us, to awaken us, Father, thank you, to your promises, to the blessings that are bestowed for thank us, you, Father, Lord. stored up for us, O oh God. Thank you. Lord, we just ask and pray, Lord, that as we give and as we sow, O oh God, into fertile um, land, Father, we ask, Father, that you continue to bless us, continue to replenish us, Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Thank you. Father, we just say we trust you. We love you. Thank you. We love you. We don't ask for anything else. We just want you to know that we love you, you. And we are so grateful to have you in our lives and that we abide in you so that you abide in us. So, Father, we just give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. and amen. Friday, we'll be together in Silver Spring. Yes, ma'am. At Alabaster Box. Absolutely. You're welcome from 9 to 4 a.m. Until 4 a.m. It's an all nighter. <laughs> and it's going to be amazing. Yes. Monday, School of Ministry starts. Yay! <laughs> School of Ministry November starts. So 9. that is exciting. Oh, my goodness. We're going to go through the Word of God. You think this? You think Congate House of the Faith is good? Come to School of Ministry. Come to School of Ministry. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll see you Thursday to our Zoom family. Yes. We love you. Thank you for joining us. I think that was all that. Don't forget to subscribe to YouTube. Yes. Share the YouTube page. Don't yes. forget to um, follow us on Instagram. Don't forget to put your notifications on for Facebook like page. And um, we will see you on Thursday. And then on 11th, we'll be in Pennsylvania. Absolutely. At Song of 11, Joy. 11, 2020. Bye. Bye, Zoom. See you on Thursday, everybody. Bye. <laughs>